Hello and welcome to this episode where we're going to talk about alternative hypervisor support, specifically support for Proxmox. So let's go in and take a deeper look at what is essentially a three-step process in which, first of all, we're going to connect to our Proxmox cluster. Then we're going to deploy our Veeam worker for Proxmox. And finally, most importantly, we're going to set up our protection and our backup jobs to protect the workloads that we require. Now, each of these steps I'm going to cover now as we dive into our demo. And if you want to follow these steps and do it yourself, please join us on our on-demand platform where you can do this in your own time on our demo lab. Or alternatively, if you would much prefer to build this in your own environment, you can get a fully featured 30-day trial from our Veeam website where you can build this yourself as a proof of concept. So into the demo, and I thought I'd start off with showing you what I've got in my home lab here, which is my uh, starting with my Proxmox cluster. And as you can see from the cluster here, I've got THPD-PVE-CL1, and this is my Proxmox cluster. And then within there, I've got two hosts, which are Proteus and Provost. And I've just got this one VM, which is uh, ID100 Dorcas, uh, and that's the, that's the estate. So if we jump over now to Veeam Backup and Replication Console, and I'll go down to our backup infrastructure. Then what we want to do is we want to add in our managed server. First of all, we're going to add in the first host, and then that's going to connect to the cluster. So let's go ahead and do that. It's a virtualization platform. We're going to go Proxmox. And we're going to add the, the uh, I'm going to add the DNS name here of my first host. Best practice would be to add a description, but I'm not going to here for this video. Now, credentials wise, I've already got the credentials for the root of my PVE host. You'd probably do that or, or uh, for a more secure approach, have a service account potentially that you would connect with. We're going to say yes to our SSH key. Now it's obtaining and connecting uh, to the storage containers. What it's going to do is by default, it will select the largest. I'm going to go ahead and choose my the one that I want, which is my QNAP called Bandit and NFS. And then that's, that's going to do now is it connect to the host and deploy the required Veeam components. Okay, so that's our components deployed. Now, as you can see, it says that um, we require at least one worker that will deliver backed up data. So yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll deploy that worker now. So our first worker, choose our storage again. Don't need a description for this particular one. And then what we can do is just go to advanced and by default, you'll see it's six vCPUs, six gig. I'm just going to drop that down for my lab because that's not needed that much uh, resources. Now, in terms of networks, I've got, um, I haven't got DHCP set up, so I'm just going to manually put those in. And then we'll add the uh, manual IP address as well. Okay, so that's configured. You can view advanced, and this is where do you want to check for updates online? I'm not going to do that just to save a little bit of time. We can always update later if we need to. Click finish, and that's going to go ahead and uh, deploy that worker onto our first node, which was Provost. Okay, so we can see we've deployed our worker. It's then applied the IP addresses. Uh, I said not to do the updates. It's done the um, services and then do some tests powered it off so there we go that's our first worker deployed now what we'll see if i go to my cluster i've only got provost this is because we need to connect to the second node which i'll go ahead and do uh, and then we'll come back when our second node and second worker is deployed and we'll we'll get into the third step of our three step process so the first step was to connect to our hosts second step is deploy the workers and then our third step, and most importantly, is to create the backup. So we'll, we'll come back shortly to do that. So now we have the second 
host connected, I have the second worker deployed. So if we just look at our cluster and we can see, I can see Proteus and Provost both in there. And if we go up to my proxies, I can now see my two workers that have been deployed into my Proxmox cluster. So now, as I mentioned, we've done step one of the uh, connecting to host, step two, deploying workers. Now the, the most important step is for us to go ahead and set up the protection and some backup jobs. So if I go back into home, what we can now do is create a new backup job from our ribbon, virtual machine, and this time we're going to pick Proxmox. Normally I'd put a description, but I won't for now, just to save time. Then we'll go ahead and add our virtual machines and we can actually, uh, just like we would for our policy based in VMware, we can choose tags and we can pick our Dorcas VM. Go ahead and choose our repository. Uh, retention policy, we'll just stick with seven days for now. And then if we wanted to run this at scheduled time, we could set it to say run at uh, 11 p.m. tonight. I hit apply on there. And then I'll set to run this job when I finish so we can see that job running. And there we go, the job's now been configured and we can see it running. We can watch the stats as it kicks off. So it's chosen the local host, uh, the local worker, sorry, on the host. So Verdi is on Provost, which is where that VM is. So we should get the best performance. So our backup is now complete. We can see that's run um, and I'll go ahead and click OK now. So finally, the most important thing is for us to go ahead and look at our restore options. So if I go down to disk and select our Proxmox backup, we can select it and along the top, we've got our options. So we've got instant recovery. We can export the disks or publish them. We can do guest files app items, a uh, single click to a uh, hyperscaler, or we can do the entire VM to another Proxmox host. So for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and do a guest files. And then we'll choose our restore point. I'm going to go to the most recent. Choose our Linux server that's going to be our helper host. I'm not going to put a restore reason for now, and then we'll hit browse. So we can now browse our file system. I want to go to my home. And then let's just say we want this file back. I'm going to copy it to my helper host and the home directory. There's already a folder contained, but that's fine. We'll go yes. And there we go, we have a restore of a guest file and I've put it to another Linux machine just so that I could access it if I needed to. And there we go, that's a our three step process of connecting to a host, deploying a worker, setting up our backup and protection jobs, and then finally restore options and, and doing a guest file restore. Thank you for joining me. Please like, subscribe or follow so you don't miss any of the future content. And thank you for joining me on this one. In our next episode, we'll be covering Veeam Data Cloud. So for now, thank you and goodbye.